Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to be using this benchtop harness that I put together in the previous video in order to show you how to take a powertrain control module and take a replacement one from a salvage yard and reflash it with a new calibration to match this one and get the VIN to match so that you can make a replacement. Same procedure if you use a brand new one, but I'm going to be showing a salvage yard one. Uh, first, let's take a break and show how to remove this particular part from an existing Chevrolet Cavalier and then we'll... Alright guys, so we're under the hood of this donor 2004 Cavalier and on the 03, 04, and 05 Cavaliers and Sunfires this PCM is conveniently located right here on the firewall. To get it off, all we're going to have to do is pull these latches down like so. And we can disconnect each of these connectors. And they're going to be really stiff they will come off. That's one. And then to get it actually out so we can get the other one, there's a couple of tabs here. So you just have to unlatch the computer from that and lift up. And then the same thing on the back one, push down, lift back, wiggle it off. And again, these types of connectors are super tight and you've got to make sure this guy is all the way in the front to have a chance of getting it to let go. Just wheel it off here. And we're set. Now we're going to take a brush and we're going to brush all this up so we don't want to get any debris into these computer connectors because that can cause problems. But this is basically what we're after here is our donor 611 PCM. So we'll take it back to the bench and I'll show you how to program it for your vehicle. So uh, if you guys are interested in this, this harness, I'll link it up in the top. I'm not going to go back over it again in this video. I'm going to go ahead and power this guy up. And if you guys uh, remember from, or if you guys watched the other video, you'll see that um, I'm using a lab, uh, a, a lab power supply here on the bench for 12 volts. And then I've got a switch here that simulates putting the ignition into the run position. I'm going to fire up my Tech 2 over here and I'm going to show you what's on this particular powertrain control module. Just wait for this guy to boot up. All right, going to diagnostics. This is a 2004 Chevrolet Cavalier setup. I'm going to go into powertrain, regular fuel automatic. And if I come down and look at ID information about this PCM, I can get the power, the, the uh, calibration ID, 12587611. I can pull off of it, and I can also pull off the VIN. So we can see this original VIN is 16309. So, you know, if this was our, in this example, this is our original vehicle, and we want to reprogram the new PCM to match this 160309 VIN number along with anything else that's stored in it. All right, so I'm going to, actually power this guy down and I'm going to come over here to my computer that I use as a tech line terminal and I'm running TIS 2000 here which is the DVD version of the technical information system and I'm going to, going to go into service programming system I'm going to set this up as a pass-through because I'm going to connect it directly to the computer and I'm going to be doing a replace and program of this engine control unit if you was just doing a reprogram that meant that maybe I had a service bulletin and I'm just applying a new calibration I'll link a video above that I've done something like that in Tech2 remote mode. I'll just show you what you can do there. That's, that's very straightforward. Now, if you're on the vehicle, so select the vehicle um, to, to, to go to this next screen. But for what I've set up here, it simulates the offboard programming adapter. So we're going to select that. Going to go to the next screen and build the car. And go to the next screen. All right, so now it tells me, make sure I've got power to my offboard programming adapter, which is what I've kind of simulated here. I'm going to hook up the cable to the Tech 2, and I'm going to switch the Tech 2 on. So this is just a cable that goes into the side. It hooks up to a 9-pin serial, and in my case, I'm using a 9-pin serial to USB adapter. I'll turn on the Tech 2, as it says. going to wait till we get to the start screen. When they say start screen, they're talking about this. All right, so now we're going to go to the next step, 
And on the next step, it says turn the ignition off, remove the existing controller, install the new controller you want to program, and then turn the ignition back on. So let's go back over here and let's do that. Let's turn the ignition off. Let's pop these connectors, press down and pull back, press down and pull back. And then it's easier to get something like this underneath and give it a little prize to get it to come off. These connectors can be very snug. All right, so what I did on the original one is I put an O on here just to mark it as original, and then this is one off of a different vehicle, and I put an R for replacement. You can see that the number is exactly the same, which is the calibration ID we saw, 12587611, and then there's a service number that is also the same. When you're pulling this for the vehicle, try as much as possible to get everything to match and be the same. So let's take the replacement one and plug it in. Lock it into place, and let's come back over to the screen. Um, all right, hold on a second. I forgot to turn the ignition on. Now let's come back over to the screen. Okay, so we turned off the ignition on our bench harness, and we removed the original PCM, and we installed the replacement one from the salvage yard, and we turned our ignition back on. Now we can proceed to the next screen. And you can see down here it's, it's reading the VIN off of the replacement PCM, which of course is not the VIN that I showed you earlier from the original. So now we're going to change the VIN as part of the reprogramming. Uh, green light, by the way, means it's talking to the Tech 2. Red light means it's trying to talk to the Tech 2. You can see over here it's making some communication with the Tech 2. And then when we come back over here, we got a green light again and we've pulled this VIN. So now this is the point where we can change this VIN. And the VIN off that vehicle, so this one's a 1G1, you know, JF, whatever. The one that we want is 3G1JH14F44S. Then there's our 160309. That's the VIN that we want to be programmed into this replacement. Okay, so now we're coming over here. It's asking us what kind of controller we're doing. We're doing normal. You always do normal. VCI is only for dealers. They're going to have special files they can get um, when they have certain option information that they need to deal with. Tech2 is talking to the replacement PCM. And we're going to build up the calibration information on the next screen. So we can see that the latest calibration here, so the calibration that was on there is kind of old, 611, and they're telling you to apply 577, and there's a bunch of fixes. These are just, these are software fixes that's going to reflash. So we're going to go ahead and take the latest and apply it. So now it's programming. So it says up here that it's uh, doing the programming, but also if you glance down real quickly here at the Tech 2, we again have the communication screen that shows that the PC is talking to the Tech 2. And we see over here what we're doing is we're starting to download this information that we'll be using to program the, the replacement PCM. So it's going to do two things. It's first going to upgrade the calibration or the flash in the, in the chip that's on the PCM. And then after it's done with that, it's going to write the correct VIN. It's a two-step process. Now, something could go wrong with this. You could end up getting this part here written correctly. And then at the end, it might have a problem where it can't write the VIN. If you get into a situation like that, unfortunately, the Tech 2 is going to be at a dead end because uh, GM doesn't allow you to try and reinstall the same calibration twice. They only let you do it one time as long as it's successful. And if you get stuck with a situation like that, you're going to have to look to a different tool, like one of these tuning tools, to go in and, and just change the VIN. But generally, um, this is what the dealer would do. Generally, this is all that's needed. Now, this was designed to be done for a brand new replacement PCM. And we're doing it on an used PCM. In this case, it's one of the rare times where it doesn't matter. If this was a body control module, for example, we wouldn't be able to do this because the body control modules are, are right once and the Tech 2 can't update any of the information on. This is why when you put a used BCM on a car, you end up with the wrong VIN, you end up with the uh, odometer being wrong, and you end up with the, uh, the the theft system being all out of whack and your radio locked, all that sort of thing. 
but a powertrain control module is much more receptive to what we're doing and it, and it allows you to reprogram it. So I'm going to go ahead and let this go because uh, it's not that long just so you can see what happens with it and it's going to get to the end here and once it finishes that last piece of the programming we should get some information about the VIN being updated. But it, you know, now again, you know, here we have this connected directly to the computer and it's pass through mode. So it's uh, as fast as it's going to get on these old computers. This is about as, as, excuse me, this old tech two, this is about as fast as it's going to go. This same process that I'm showing here with a tech two could be done with an MDI, although you'd have to pay for a subscription on uh, TIS to web instead of using TIS 2000. And for this older vehicle, this 2004, it's really not worth it. It's better to take the uh, TIS 2000 route. That covers everything up through the 2007 model year right out of the box and uh, has all the calibrations like you saw that apply back to those years. All right. So even though it says um, it's got like maybe six bars to the end, I think it's a little bit closer than that. Just looking at the number of bytes out of the 524 kilobytes, it's gone 475 kilobytes at this point. So almost at the end here, guys. Just bear with us. Okay, the final pieces. Here we go. Last 12K. 4K. Done. All right, so now we've reprogrammed it. Now we should be going into the updating of the VIN. And we're done. That's all it is to it. Now it's telling us that we could disconnect this controller and reinstall it in the vehicle. You know, we've done this bench kind of set up to simulate that. It's telling you there's a possibility that you'll have to do a crankshaft position relearn. And I'll show you where you do that in the Tech 2 if needed. But at this point, the programming is complete. And I'm going to go ahead and uh, well, actually, you know, I don't need to close this. I'll leave this up here in case we need to look at it. I'm going to come over here to the Tech 2 and I'm going to disconnect this and I'm going to go in here and we're going to go take a look at this PCM and inspect it. Passenger car, Chevrolet, J car, Cavalier, powertrain, regular fuel, automatic. Take a look at our ID information. Calibration ID we can see now has been updated to the 12598577 level. And our VIN is what we want. It's our 16309 VIN. So we have reprogrammed this PCM and we're ready to go. And again, you know, this is uh, on the bench. So this information here is, is uh, kind of fake, but it's still reading it. It just doesn't have any sensors to read live. If you watch the other video I linked, you can see information about that. Now, if it gets the crankshaft relearn uh, procedure by throwing a, P, a, D, a DTC P1336 or P0315, you come into special functions and you come down here and run this guy. And this guy would then tell you um, what to do to, to do this. There's a little bit of information here, and then you press enter. We're not in the vehicle, so I can't actually do this. But that's you can use the same tech too to clear that error. But at this point, you should be ready to go, and you should have this complete. What I'll do in the description of the video is I'll link the part numbers for a brand new powertrain control module, as well as some of these part numbers for these used ones and the years that this covers. It's pretty much this procedure we did today, even though we used a Cavalier. So I'll cover a lot of P11 uh, style powertrain control modules and I'll list a number of different vehicles this applies to. So anyway, I hope this helps you out. If it did, please like and subscribe. And thanks for watching.